I'm live. This is my second attempt at <clears throat> starting this because uh, the first attempt went back to using the wrong microphone. Crazy, I know. Crazy, I know. So now let's see. Is anyone in here? No, no one in here. Good. I didn't want to talk to anyone anyway. Be honest, these. I'm kidding. I love talking to people. I love talking to people. I love getting to know people, uh, having their questions. I'm in uh, deleting videos, maybe. Why won't you let me delete you? There we go. It is very confusing things around deleting videos on YouTube. So my prediction is no one's going to show up. And my further prediction is that um, I'm going to talk about nothing for about 45 more seconds. Literally 45 seconds. We'll see, though. Who knows what will happen? Right now, we you know what I should have done. I feel silly for not doing this. Uh, when I had a bunch of stuff to do was I could have, well, actually, I don't know if I could have done that. Isn't that, it's depressing to know that I don't even, I don't think I could have done that. I, I really, I, what I was thinking is, I mean, it would be cool if, because I was, I've been working on the first responder kit again. Working on the first responder kit, a lot of fun. Again, getting back into the blitz scripts because, let's face it, writing a bunch of stuff like that from scratch would be goofy as hell. Goofy. You know, and in my head when I first was thinking about doing it, I was like, I have all these ideas that would tie all these disparate data points together. And I really want to code that. And then I'm like... <sighs> the reality of work set in. <laughs> the reality of free time set in. And, uh, you know, I just, I end up, you know, because I'm, I'm so comfortable with them, I end up using the Blitz scripts when I, when I talk to my customers. Um, so that's fun. I don't know. It's all right. It's all right. So I've been working on those again. I added a couple things. Well, hopefully, if, as long as my pull requests are approved at some point. Uh, I, I, I've added a, f a couple things to Blitz Cache, and I added, well, I'm adding something now to Blitz Index. It looks like it works, so I'm going to save this and create a pull request. I can't show you because YouTube streaming <laughs> sucks like that. <laughs> but I promise you I'm doing it. Live and in person while you watch. Let's see. Joe has a question, though. Joe, Joe has an important question about partitioning, one of my favorite subjects. Uh, for partitioned indexes, does the field that is partitioned on need to be in the key value list? God, yes. Like, I think, I, I think that might be like an actual restriction, but on top of that, like, if you want partition elimination, if you want any of, any of like the, the meager scraps of performance improvement that you might get from partitioning your indexes, it better be in there. Otherwise, you are screwed in ways which I cannot account for. So yes, yes, it does. Definitely want that in there. Absolutely. definitely. Without it, who knows what will happen to you. Be sucked into the cold, lifeless vortex of space your blood cold boiled in your veins and well, you'll be in good company though you'll be with uh <clears throat> with elon musk's car guy you'll be with george clooney space dust himself in that dumb movie with the gravity uh 
What was the other one? There was some other space movie. Steve Buscemi, maybe, or Tim Robbins, or someone just open up their space mask and they go pssst, 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 squish themselves. That's how I want to go. Valiantly in space, preferably shooting a laser. That's my ideal, my ideal way to go. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. All right, there are a handful of you here. I'm surprised. I was expecting no one to show up. Lucky me. But you have to ask questions if you want. <laughs> if you want this to go on <laughs> for any amount of time. For all what ten of you, or something. Someone, someone has to have a question about SQL Server. Otherwise, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go lay down on the floor and cry that I'm not on vacation anymore. It's. One thing. Actually, I'll probably just go to the gym. I, I I got to the gym three times in a month, and it was three days in a row when we were uh, at a hotel that had one that I could do anything in that wasn't cardio. The rest of the time, we were well. Two weeks we were in an Airbnb which had no gym, and um, when I when I brought up the idea of getting. A temporary gym membership. My wife scowled at me in a way that she has not scowled at me in a long time. Not since I think we were dating. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what else? Uh, I don't know. A couple other hotels you're in had like somehow worse hotel gyms than usual. And so I am a disgusting, soft mess right now. And I've been I've been at the gym every single day this week, just trying to trying to get things to firm up a little bit in preparation for next week when I will resume regular lifting activities. Regular, regular. Hopefully putting another 200. And hope, I want to get 250 overhead. I want to get 250 overhead press as strict as possible. That's what I'm going for because 225 ain't good enough. 225 felt good until I realized it wasn't 250. And I don't know, I guess 250 will feel good until I realize it's not 300 or something. Idiot. Idiotic, right? 250 isn't nuts. 250 is just good. 250 is good because it'd be, it's more than I weigh. 225 is like borderline on that. <laughs> Which is, you know, for a guy who's about 5'10, that's a healthy chunk of fat. Let's see, Joe says, I have a table that is partitioned on field one. However, there is only one distinct value in field one. Seems worthless to have partitioning, right? Yeah, that is the most useless partitioning because you have one partition. What what what? Is, how many partitions? It was one. This is a pitch part one single partition in that entire table. Uh, but on the other hand, I think it maybe it might be like just <laughs> like undoing part <laughs> undoing partitioning on that table might not be worth the hassle. I would probably just leave it alone. Like. <laughs> Is this an SAP database? This, sound, this sounds like something that would happen in an SAP database. <laughs> so there's like, um, I've worked with people who use SAP and uh, it's funny. It's an ERP when I say, okay, so something like that. So uh, it's funny because um, SAP has like, this software that they're like, we're going to be so flexible. You can use it's, it's like multi site or something like that. Where like, so like all the clustered indexes start with like this site key or something. And then, but most people just have like a single site. So the clustered indexes are all just like the number one. <laughs> <Okay>. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, multi-site exactly. I, I know. So uh, let's see here. Uh, info. I wonder what it is. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Marcy says, I heard you say you're going to work on Blitz scripts. Can you please make Blitz index archive and delete unused indexes by table? So uh, one of my grand plans for Blitz index has always been uh, not like an automated version of that because an, like I, I'm not willing to take the insurance risk of an automated version of that. But like right right now, it's like a lot of analysis and not a lot of action. So what I wanted, what I've like, what, what I wanted to do for a long time was like give advice rather than just say, "This is what's up." Yeah. So uh, what I wanted to do was like have a mode where you know uh, the the advice turned into action so like if you had some unused indexes or some low tr like low not good use indexes we would just say hey, me, here's a drop script for that maybe you should think about dropping that rather than like just give you 20 columns of how poorly used they are so stuff like that. And so like the and like the real goal, like in my head, the ultimate goal would be to go through both indexes that you currently have and unused indexes and try to based on well for you for indexes that exist, so based on reads can start to consolidate overlapping indexes and for missing index requests based on impact and uh, uses consolidate indexes. Um, that's going to be a little tougher. That's going to be a lot, a, lot, a lot tougher, but I would love to be able to put that in there. Like in my, in my head, I, I, I think I have like good ideas to do that. But then, you know, the, the funny thing about my good ideas is that uh, as soon as as soon as I'm like, yep, here we go, it's implemented. I'm like, oh, wait, that, that didn't work. If there's anyone who can do it, it's me. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there are lots of people who could do it. <laughs> I, can, I can think of so many people who I wish would do it instead. <laughs> Uh boy. Rowdy says, what's up, Eric? What's up, Rowdy? How are you? How are things in the sandwich biz? <laughs> ah, 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 I kid. Rowdy is a semi-professional human being. Not quite as professional as Marcy. Marcy is extra professional. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh, boy. Uh, everything's boring today. It's a weird day. It's a, like, it's even like more weird than a usual Friday. I woke up late. I talked to Joe Sack for an hour about nothing. Uh, I don't know. Worked on, worked on blitz scripts. Felt like I had a job again. <laughs> Just kidding. It doesn't feel that way at all. Uh, it was, so I, today I, um, you know, it was it's it was the first time working on them as an outsider. So I I, I got all weird. It was all weird, like not having like elevated access to stuff. And I had to, I actually had to read an old blog post of mine about how to work with other people's GitHub repos. <laughs> it's like it's like oh that's how you do it. Ah, oh, I messed that up. So like I had to like create my own fork and branch in my own fork, and then create pull requests and it was all goofy like, oh how do how do regular people do this just give me sa brent whatever whatever it's called on github i'm only gonna go delete everything just use those jerk <sighs> anyway rowdy says working on some powershell t sql bastardization scripts and hoping for friday to go faster you know, <clears throat> boy, that 
PowerShell. You love that PowerShell. I've never quite figured that PowerShell thing out. For me, you know what's funny is for me, PowerShell was always uh, a, a way to run SQL against some servers that for some reason I couldn't use a, uh, what do you call it? Cent centralized server. That's how long I've ignored DBS. Cent central, central, man central management server. There we go. Yeah. You know, I like power. I I like PowerShell for some stuff. I like PowerShell for, like, like administrative things, like admin for administering like Active Directory or Exchange or failover clusters. Or if you're if you're Paul White, managing uh, managing availability groups with PowerShell is like a huge part of your job. Uh, and then so, like like I think administratively, it's it's really powerful. And it's got a lot going for it, but the the hot glue people use it as is insane sometimes like <sighs> that's where i learned it as a sysadmin now i have a hammer and everything is a nail i hear you that's how i feel about temp tables <laughs> no i'm kidding ah, temp tables are great i can't tell you how many how many problems temp tables solve like like every day that I work with someone tuning queries. I feel like, don't know, I'm picking my nails with a knife, I'm an idiot. I'm probably gonna cut a fingernail off my hand, but uh, I, I've got this one weird corner cuticle situation. I don't have dirty nails. I barely have any nails whatsoever. I have this one weird corner cuticle situation which is driving me nuts. So that's that's what I'm doing surgery on while I talk. Because it, apparently it's common. But uh, yeah, so it, it like every time I talk to someone, I was like working on like tuning queries. But it's like, like, like normal looking query, uh, you know, like just like a select, pretty simple join, pretty simple where clause. But there's like a bunch of like sub queries in the select list, and like, and find like like weird top one, like go do some complicated count out and do stuff. I'm like, this is confusing, and so I just like like dump dump the regular select list into a temp table and then just do the subqueries with the with the temp table and I'm like oh yeah that fixed <laughs> every single day Let's see matt says isn't it interesting that as dbas we all do so many different things and that companies expectations that we support are so different from one shop to another yeah it's uh you know i think it's the beauty of the job is that so many people uh, can call themselves dbas and have very similar, uh, you know, pains and war stories, and you know, very similar, very similar scars, <laughs> but 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 do very different jobs. Like you know, I'm sure there's been all sorts of you know, like if you take a production type DBA who's you know trying to you know fail over to DR or like you know deal with an availability like patch an availability group or something crazy that like they'll have like very like like very similar it's almost like how uh at, at one point in the world different cultures all have like very similar stories or symbols or like like you know gods or <laughs> something in their in their lore and like you know, their beliefs and all that whereas like 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 it doesn't matter what angle you approach being a dba from you end up dealing with very similar issues and it's like like you have management on one end and users on the other end and you in the middle and like developers annoying you sorry developers you're great thanks for keeping me in work uh but yeah it's just like it's funny and you know i'm like i'm a, I'm a perf guy but i end up talking to people about you know ha and dr stuff a lot and i actually like sent out a tweet the other day about how like since i started my own thing i've had four four conversations with people about how you can't have multiple writable like to like have like multiple primaries that like two nodes that can accept rights in an availability group I'm like doesn't it, isn't it, is that not clear enough? <laughs> like, like the, they're arguing with me. 
I'm like, I didn't invent the technology and I didn't write the documentation. Here's the documentation. Here's where it says you can't do that. I'm like, no, but management wants it. I'm like, talk to Microsoft. I actually had someone accuse me of, uh, or not, well, not, not accuse me, but someone asked me who I worked for. Like someone, someone thought that I was like in cahoots with some company who like just didn't want them to use AGs or something. Or something. Like I was like like I was like I was part of like big failover cluster, like so the the failover cluster industrial complex. I was like, I'm not lying to you. Oh, Rowdy, were you copying and pasting you sly dog? That came in real fast. Rowdy says, I think every DBA has a story about that time the patch failed to apply and failed to roll back. That time the cluster did that weird thing and didn't come back up. The time storage, oh man, the storage one. Everyone has it. Like, well, everyone who has been on a SAN, been on a SAN, has that storage story. And Rowdy, I, I tell uh, a detail free version of, of our story, of our time together. <laughs> Uh, with that thing that didn't go right on that server with all the databases. Uh, <laughs> I tell that frequently when people are like, well, this is how we're taking backups. And I'm like, y'all are going to have problems at some point. Problems. Big problems. Boom, problems. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, keep doing that. Call me in a few months. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. I I I I I finally remember the part of that call. We were like, we don't care about this database. I'm like, cool, skip, <laughs> start from scratch. <laughs> like, like we haven't, we never used that thing anyway. I'm like, sweet, <laughs> not deal with that. <sighs> yeah, but I mean, those, so those are like, those are those are great examples of production DBA type problems. And you know, uh, if you do perf stuff, if you're like a developer type DBA, you're gonna have problems or like, you know, you create, you tried to create that index and you cause blocking for three days, and then you hit cancel and you cause blocking for three more days because <laughs> you had to, the thing had to roll back, or like, you know, you you tried to fix a problem and you you know created a bug with the fix for the problem. Just like so many different things that, you know, uh. You can you can you can all share the like like you all understand the pain that those moments caused working with a database because like no matter what you're trying to do with the database there's like this significant like pain that can be had when things go wrong it's, you have to everyone everyone's gonna come together on that it doesn't matter you know I feel like I I feel tremendous sympathy for people who need to manage complex high availability and disaster recovery so i had tremendous sympathy i would my 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 goose would be cooked on that not in a good way not in a friendly christmas goose way and like goose fell into the fire way rowdy says i'm looking forward to pass to get to tell and hear those stories well you know i, I know you are but here's the thing rowdy pass is all BI people and AI and machine learning, so they're just not going to get it. They're they're going to stare at you like you are a caveman, and like you're like your uh, what's his name, Sylvester Stallone in Demolition Man. Like you just crawled out of a sewer, eating a rat burger, the blonde streak in your hair or something. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Passes passes. Uh, I don't know. They're doing their thing. They're having fun. They're having fun this year. Hopefully, they uh, <clears throat> ignite some new curiosity, some new passions in people. <laughs> no, no one explained the shells. This is a family-friendly uh, YouTube broadcast. <clears throat> I actually read something very exciting that Spotify is testing a create podcast thing and if spotify introduces an easy way for me to create a podcast i will podcast the hell out of this because gosh darn it every other way i look into doing it i like like libsyn or i don't know it's I don't know, it's just 
looks weird. Mm. I wish I could pay someone like five bucks an episode to, to just do it for me. I would make my life a lot easier while I stand here brandishing weapons, trying to fix a cuticle. Crazy, right? So like, uh, <clears throat> while I was, while I was on vacation, I tried to, I tried to use the time semi wisely to, uh, since I obviously wasn't going to the gym to like figure out like, okay, how can I be like, uh, better at stuff? And the one recurring theme that I came across, like literally every successful person, everyone, well, let's see every, every successful person with a podcast <laughs> that I, 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 I tried to like read stuff from suggest says you should meditate you should start meditating you know start easy a couple minutes five minutes ten minutes uh and just like meditate like close your eyes and concentrate on breathing and then like you know there are some great meditation apps out there now like i hear meditation app and i get like that's like you know you're you're trying to do like this this thing like like there's an app for that it seems like a real you know Pardon my French, but I, I did just did just get back from the continent. It seems real shitty to need an app just to meditate. And so, <clears throat> you know, I will close my eyes and breathe for a little bit. Seems like a reasonable start to things. You know, do it do it if I feel stressed out or in the morning or if I'm banging my head against a problem that I can't seem to make heads or tails of. So I do that, and then uh, I, so I I started to look at some apps that might, you know, like might, might expand that horizon a little. And so I'm like going through, I have an Android, so I'm going through the play store and like, I see a bunch of, a bunch of apps that are like, like free to download. I'm like, you know, make me pay for this. No, okay. okay. You know, you put some work and you recorded stuff. You should get paid for your work. That's, you know, okay. But then you open up all of these apps and the first thing they do is ask for your email address. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Never. I, it got me so stressed out. Like, I, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to look at this app. It has a seashell for, for an icon. Oh, I'm going to be so relaxed in a minute. You open it up and like, there's this like, like pretty blue sparkly thing happens. And you're like, ooh. And like, if I, if I ever had sound on my phone, I'm sure it would have been like, like tinkling chimes and relaxing, relaxing wind, wind noises. But no. Enter your email address. Don't have an account? Sign up with Facebook. And I'm like, immediately just twitch. Lose my mind. Like the, like the opposite of what meditation should impart on you is what happened to me. It's like, just anger. Pure anger. <laughs> Please enter your email address. Like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm very angry about that. So that was my experience with with meditation apps. Was, they're dumb. They're dumb and don't download them. Don't encourage people who ask for your email address. That's it. I don't know. So now I now I, I've 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 found uh, there's a kids channel on YouTube called pure star kids and if you if you just search on youtube for countdown rainbow timer you'll find all of their videos which range from like one minute to like an hour but it's just like a picture of a rainbow that's like semi-animated and and it counts down and at the end of the the countdown there's like birds chirping that plays and if that's that's about my speed so no no guided transcendental tantric yoga chakra clearing talking voice meditation for me i'm just gonna close my eyes and fall half asleep and wait until i hear birds chirping something like that i don't know see if that works we'll see if that works or if it's just a waste of five minutes of my <laughs> Uh, who knows? Who knows? All right. 
no one's asking questions anymore and I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm just rambling. So, uh, I'm going to call this one a day. Uh, I will, now that I'm, 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 I'm back, I'll be here next week too. As long as no senseless tragedy befalls me anyway. Adios. See you next week. Thanks for showing up. You're all sports.